Okay, Neil. Um, it, says, it says the meeting is now live streaming on your custom live streaming service. So um, I presume whatever I did has just worked. Okay. So I'm just going to introduce myself. My name's Graham Hooper from Tri Coaching Partnership. And today I'm going to be interviewing Neil Whiteman, one of the Tri Coaching trainers from Why to Learn. So, Neil, introduce yourself. Tell me a bit about you. Uh, hello, I'm Neil Whiteman. Uh, born in Leicestershire, Leicestershire lad. Uh, I've lived in Leicestershire all my life. Uh, I started work in a hosiery factory. I left that and went to be a manager in quite a big, well-known superstore distribution centre. And at the same time, I was a retained fireman as well, which was really, really interesting. Uh, I learned a lot from that. I learned a lot about myself there as well. Uh, Prior, from that, I then left the fire service, couldn't commit to the training hours. Yep. I left Tesco's and became a driving instructor. So well, that's a little bit about me. Okay. Neil, let's get this out of the way. Yeah, because I know, yeah, I want to get this out of the way now. Outside interests. Oh. Yeah. What outside interests do you have? I'll try not to yawn, sorry. Go on, okay. Get on with it. Okay. So my outside interest is I'm a massive, massive Leicester City fan. <laughs> home and away, every season, home and away, and that's what I love to do. I, I love the camaraderie on the bus. I love the camaraderie around the ground. And just recently, two years ago, we were promoted champions of the Premier League. <laughs> what could I ask for? Uh, I don't know. Well, they used to shoot foxes, didn't they? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that, that's you. I know you're passionate about Leicester. Um, do you do anything else, um, you know, uh, keep fit wise or anything like that outside interests? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm big on walking. I've been big on walking for a long time. What, since outside. you were two? Pardon? Since you were two. Yeah, <laughs> long time, yeah. Uh, I do like it to keep fit. I, I like it to exercise with. Uh, I was doing 10,000 steps, which have now up. So on a daily basis, I'm doing 12,500 steps. That's before I start my day. I feel okay. so refreshed after that as well. So. Yeah, yeah could you, I mean, uh, Tony Robbins, who's a great coach, says change your physiology, change your state. Yeah. So if you, you know, exercise really does that. It changes your physiology. It changes your state of mind. What they say, don't they? They say um, healthy body, healthy mind. That's right. And, and my students and my PDI certainly benefit from that because I feel refreshed when I go out to do my day's work. So I totally agree with that statement. Totally agree with it. OK. Now, I know there's some other little things going on. So, um uh, you, you've been doing some Zooming, not some Fat Larry's band, but some Zooming. Tell us a little bit about what's going on with that, please. Yeah, so uh, five five tri-coaching trainers, and uh, we've all got together over this period of being locked down, and we put some coaching videos together, which has been really, really interesting to do, as well as to watch. Uh, we've got a lot out of it. It refreshes everything that we do or we've been doing with our students as well so yeah i thoroughly enjoy doing them as well uh, okay. and being involved what are they called uh why don't you and uh, then whatever whatever it is yeah why don't you and then whatever and where you know to the audience out there where can they be found where will we see these uh they can be found on facebook uh they're streamed as a webinar as well so, so yeah, and all, all of us are sharing the, the videos that we're doing, so they can be found on our Facebook page. Okay, well. so if I looked up your Facebook profile, Neil Whiteman, I could find the video on there. You would do, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That's what I needed. That's what I needed to know. Um, I know other stuff uh, I know that you're doing um, or have done, which is um, um, you, you, you have something to do with one of your local uh, driving instructor associations. Yeah, so uh, our association, Hinkley and District Driving Instructors, we've been going, this is the third year now. Uh, the first year that we started up, we actually won the DIA Driving Association 
of the year award okay well done that was really good uh my role in that is vice chairman i didn't want to be the chair but i'd quite happily be the vice and what my role is actually is is organizing presentations and talks for the association members thoroughly enjoy that and nine times out of ten every year we have different ones attending so i really yeah. thank them for that as well okay really good um you mentioned awards um have you ever won any awards uh yeah i won the dia driving <laughs> instructor of the year award same same year as we won association of the year award as well so okay that was really good i no. think we were there at the time as well yeah yeah no i was i was at brands hatch when it was uh when you had um given the the, the trophy that's uh, right yeah it was a bit like uh you know not not about the same status as Leicester winning the, the the Premier League, I think, uh, along those lines. Also, um, um, something to do with safeguarding. Tell me a little bit about you do. Um, yeah, well, so, I don't know. Tell me a bit about it. OK, so uh, I was interested in safeguarding and it's about safeguarding vulnerable adults and smaller children. Uh, I went and did a course thought it was fully interesting so I went off and become an instructor for it and I'm start, now starting to offer out the courses to the general ADI population out there. It, okay. can, it can be over Zoom uh, so we can do two sessions over Zoom. We've got to do seven hours to get a certificate which is a level three certificate but uh, with the profession that we work in it, it's important to know what we need to do to safeguard ourselves not only people as well that are coming into our, our vehicles but uh, it's it's well worth having a look at and if anybody wants to get in touch with me and, and discuss it further then I'm more than happy for that. And what's the best way to for, for them to get hold of you Neil? Uh, they can email me at neilwhiteman1 at sky.com or they can contact me through Facebook or even they can get in touch with yourselves at Try Coaching and you can pass the, the yeah, contact yeah, on for me. We'd be more than happy to do that, Neil. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, anybody out there looking for safeguarding training, then, you know, feel free to get in touch. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, I, I know that you do, um, well, on the, what you do for ADIs, um, I know you do standards check. What do you do? What do you do involved with the standards check for ADIs? Uh, so standards check, uh, we we do the workshop where people come for the for the workshop to learn about uh, standards checks, what they need to to do to improve themselves. Uh, also do an half day training session with them as well. So I go out to them and, and we work through everything that they feel that they're weak on 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 the yeah. marking sheet. And I just help them as much as I can, coach them, try and get them to see where they need to improve, really. Uh, and I thoroughly enjoy that as well, to be quite honest. Okay. And there's two things you do with your um, with, with your learners. Um, maybe you can cover both of these off. Um, a virtual driving lesson and also online theory training. Do you want to just tell me about both of them, please? Yes. Yeah, so uh, just recently, uh, with the introduction of Zoom, I've uh, started to do online theory test training with them. Uh, it's, it's like an hour session. We just work through a set test uh, and they're giving me the answers and then I'm just coaching them around the right answer if it's not correct. So they get to understand how they're looking for the answer, what the answer is. Uh, and it's just generally pushing them like that. And uh, with the other one, with a virtual driving lesson, what I did was set up a virtual driving lesson to put on my website where I was sat on, on Zoom yeah. and my pupil was sat in a driving seat and it was the first time they've ever sat in a driving seat and I was just talking about setting the car up so they know what they've got to do. And I was just asking general questions, see what they knew, improved on their knowledge. And, and yeah... It, it worked really well, and I'm looking forward to doing more of that once uh, once we're out of lockdown. To be quite okay. honest, 
Um, I mean, I suppose the online theory test keeps you in contact, doesn't it, with um, with, with with your customers? Yeah. And you know, the 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 virtual driving lesson when they're not having a driving lesson, they've got a um, a, a resource to go to to get information. Well, that that's sounds cool. really really good and proactive in building your business. So with that, I want to ask you a question. Where would you like to be in your career five years from now? How do you, how do you see that? So what I see in five years time is uh, possibly a fleet of 20 cars uh, and my instructors working and me doing all the other bits and doing the training and encouraging more P PDIs. So that, that's where I see myself in five years time. Okay, brilliant. Um, what attracted you to try coaching? Uh, well, to be quite honest, uh, I'm keen to always keep improving myself and pushing myself. And uh, at the time I was just bouncing along. I just, I just qualified and I was looking for something else that was going to give me, uh, shall we say, a step up. Yeah, and I come across try coaching and a BTEC level four, and I, I thought about it and I thought about it and then I, I leaped into it, and to be quite honest, I've never looked back, and it changed me as a driving instructor. It, it improved what I did on a daily day daily basis, gave me a lot more skills, gave me a massive great toolbox, and like I say, it, it's just improved my lessons and. Everybody will say that uh, they enjoy it now because they're putting the input in as well. Excellent. Excellent. So, I mean, that obviously suggests to me that, you know, you're, you're really interested in continued professional development. Have you got any plans? I mean, because, you know, quite a lot of our plans got scuppered the, the, this year. But have you got any plans that you'd want to do to improve yourself over the next year? Uh, well, to be quite honest, I didn't want to sit still while we're in this lockdown. That's why I introduced the virtual driving lessons. That's why I introduced the, the theory test, because it get, gets me thinking about it as well myself. Yeah. Uh, that's why I wanted to get in, in with the coaching sessions as well, because I think you can just stagnate and not do anything. And I think it's really, really important that uh, people get involved and do CPD while they can. Uh, you know, look at different things while you've got the time, improve yourself a little bit more. Uh, and that's what I'm constantly trying to do, improve myself. Yeah, I think I think um, driving instructors get a little bit scared of this online uh, Zoom. Um, you know, there's quite a lot of people go, I can't learn by doing Zoom or, you know, oh, no, I don't want to do this. I want to prefer to go and sit in the classroom and do it. What would you say to those people? I would say come, come along, have a look at it. Don't don't be scared of what's going to happen in the future. It's technology and the world's moving. And I do see this being part of what we do moving forward. We can do sessions over Zoom, so we've not got to travel too far. And I, I just say, you know, embrace it. Take a look at it. Speak to me. Let me take you through it as well. Yeah, so if any uh, driving instructors watch this and, you know, are a bit like, oh, Zoom, really? You know, um, have a chat with Neil. See how he can um, help you out. Excellent. Um, how would you describe your training style? Uh, my training style, I, I'm pretty calm. I'm relaxed. Uh, I, I'm open. Uh, I'm honest. And I encourage self-reflection constantly. Uh, not only from, from the student, but from myself as well. And uh, I think that's a big, big, big plus. When, when you can self-reflect on yourself as well as what you're doing, it is massive. And I would encourage anybody to do that. So just being open, calm, and, and just generally pushing it along, it's brilliant. Okay. Now, Neil, I know that... Um... You're heavily supportive of Tri Coaching Partnership, especially when we come to Tri Coaching Instructor Training Ticket. You help support me on the trainer trainer courses. Yeah. What's the best thing about training instructors slash PDIs 
for you, the best thing? The best thing is yeah. it, it's that moment of uh, when they've got everything coming together and they actually see it and they turn around and they say, wow, I see what you say there. I see what you're doing. And everything just floods to them. And like you say, light bulbs, left, right and centre. And you know at that point, I've got this. I, yeah. I can set this on now and I can move forward with it. Yeah, uh, as a recent yeah. interview with a PDI that we did, you know, he echoed exactly the same as well. Yes. And yeah, that's on. That's out there somewhere. That's on one of the Tri Coaching Partnerships websites. I'm sure it's on your website as well. Um, yeah, I interviewed uh, Ian Hunt, a PDI, alongside Neil not so long ago, and, and Ian can praise his uh, instructor training enough, and that was delivered by Neil. So what made you want to become a trainer? Uh, to be quite honest, I've always liked being in the role of a trainer. Uh, I, I've always been looking to push myself forward to, to get better and better. And I got to the point where I was just a driving instructor and I wanted more. Uh, and obviously with the, the BTEC level four behind me, I could move on to that stage of being that instructor. And it just seemed the right move to take. And I thoroughly enjoy what I do now. And I'm really glad that I, I took that step. Yeah. Push myself forward. I think, um, you know, someone delivers the trainer trainer course. I really do notice the difference between those who come on our course who have done the BSEC Level 4 Professional Award in Coaching for Driver Development and those who haven't. There is an immense difference. But I don't know what it does, but it gives people that magic spark, that insight, um, it, um, that confidence boosting, I think, is, 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 is really key to the BTEC 4. And actually, talking about confidence boosting, because I'm... I want to ask you about this because I I knew I saw a change in you, sir. Yeah, um, <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you went and did a course with Tri Coaching Partnership, and something happened, and there was a huge change in you. Yeah, that that was the uh, the presentation skills course, I believe that you're talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah, that that was massive for me, to be quite honest. Uh, I thought when I was doing it, I'd actually let myself down. Uh, and I'd got quite a long drive and I reflected on that. And a few words that somebody said, I can't remember whether it be yourself or Sue, but I remember them saying, stand up, show up. And yeah. that resonated with me. And I, I've changed ever since. And I, I'm quite happy. I'm keen to do these sort of things now. I'm keen to step up. <laughs> I'm keen to jump in. Uh, the funny thing was that uh, the night that I come home from that presentation course, I went to our local association and without even thinking about it, I stood up straight away and started answering questions and then stood into the middle of the room answering the questions and I would have never have done that before then. So, yeah, something changed that day. It just shows you, doesn't it? Because I knew you when you first started out, Neil, and it just shows the power of continued professional development and how it inspires people and, and, and improves them. So I suppose on that, really, I want to know what inspires you? What inspires me? It's, uh, it's a bit like my uh, mission statement. So my mission statement is hard work plus determination plus passion equals success. And I'm a big believer in pushing myself and being passionate about what I do and that will take me through and from what I've done with Tri Coaching and what I've done myself with my driving school as well just keeps backing it up everything that you know all the CPD that I do and, and everything else just keeps backing me up and it just gives me all the knowledge that I need to just push myself on and on and on. Okay. I want to ask you about your coaching journey. I suppose in two things, I want to ask uh, where it started. Did it, because I, 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 I don't know where it actually started and where, um, how are you still developing your coaching? 
Okay, so uh, it all started, uh, and again, it started on the BTEC level four. Okay. Uh, I, I wasn't really sure what coaching was. I thought it was just asking a few questions, but uh, I, I soon realized that it went a bit further than that. And it tapped onto things like people's emotions, uh, nervousness, GDE, pushing the higher levels of the GDE, the goals for driver education. And I started to realize that and I started to play with it after the BTEC 4 in lessons. And I found it started to become a bit more easier. Uh, I then went and done a life coaching diploma, which pushed it on a little bit further. And uh, like I said, I've been asking questions and tapping into emotions. Uh, I'm currently studying a body language diploma as well to, to be able to push it on a little bit further. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it's from that day on that BTEC level four and just generally playing with it. It's, it's uncomfortable at the start. It's uncomfortable to start coaching. Yeah. Uh, but you soon get that hang of it. And I, I actually now sit in lessons and think, God, what have I actually done today? <laughs> because sometimes there's so much self-reflection from a student that you think, wow, I've not done nothing. It's, it's all come from them. But it's asking them powerful questions that open up the avenue for you to be able to keep and that's what you do. Yeah, and that's and that's what you do, Neil. That that's the key, isn't it, with, with, with coaching. It's not pouring the knowledge in, it's not all that input from the driving structure, it's actually bringing that out of, mm. of the client, knowing that learning comes from within um, is really key to being a coach and being self-aware as well. Now, I want to come back, actually, to um, Ticket, which is Try Coaching Instructor Training, uh, because I did that interview with, with you and Ian a little while ago, but I just want you to, for the benefit of this audience, just touch on how does Ticket differ from conventional PDI training? Oh, God. <laughs> I, I love this product to start with. I've got to say that. I, I really do love this product. Uh, how it differs? Well, to be quite op open with it, it's so easy. It, it, it is so easy. Everything's set out. It's all about them learning about themselves and what they can put into it rather than right, okay, we're going to do this, we're going to concentrate on zebra crossings, we're going to concentrate on crossroads and just working through PSTs. This is actually throwing them into a different line. So it's getting them to understand what, why they're doing it, what's the benefits from it. And I think, to be quite honest, a lot of PDIs have said to me that commentary, when they're learning to commentate when they're driving, is actually setting them up to be a teacher. Yeah. Uh, and I find that amazing because you see people start to commentate, really nervous at the start, just giving you little bits. But when they start to grow into it and they're giving you everything, then you can start to challenge that and put that into to being a teacher. And that's where they learn to be a driving instructor. Okay. Um, just changing tact actually a little bit. Um, if you look at your life, um, and this can be anything, um, well, I probably know the answer to it. No, it can't be. Um, <laughs> what are you most proud of? Oh, what am I most proud of? Yeah. Uh, I would say, firstly, probably uh, the birth of my daughters. Okay, cool. Yeah. Good answer. <laughs> magic moment, magic moment. Yeah. Uh, then I would say, uh, being able to achieve what I've achieved through life, if, if that makes sense. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and obviously, no, I don't want to go. Yeah. I did, not, we were not really doing it. He's going to talk about bloody Leicester again. Um, all right, so moving on swiftly. Um, if you, if, if your friends, what three character traits? Would your friends use to describe you? Uh, most of them would say that I've got calming influence. Uh, I build rapport or let them uh, build rapport quite quickly. 
and I'm relaxed in the way that I teach. So I'm open to what they're saying. I'm not, it's not my agenda. I focus on their agenda. And that they're the three main characteristics that I feel make me a good driving instructor. Okay. All right. So, and I might know the answer to this, but I just want to clarify this. What has impacted you most in your career and how? Uh, well, I've, I've got to say, I mean, <laughs> try coaching us, to be quite honest, and the, the courses that they've put on and I've attended, which I've attended, I believe, all of them that you've done. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, has, has made me grow as a person, well, as, as well as a driving instructor and as a trainer as well. And, and I just think that that there is probably the biggest impact on my career. Uh, and, and on myself as well. Okay, checks in the post. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah this, this one I, I, I asked the other day, but I think I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, just for, how do you think I rate as an interviewer? All oh, right, okay. So I think uh, James, James Corden's got something to look out for, and he because the late, <laughs> late show's calling you quite easily, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, God, who did I have yesterday? Michael Parkinson and uh, Michael Aspel, I think, yesterday. Oh, dear. All right, moving swiftly on. Um, what kind of car do you drive? I uh, drive a Ford Focus. A full Focus. Yeah. Um, bear in mind this crisis, and there's no right or wrong answer to this, but if you could be anywhere in the world right now, where would you be? Uh, Negril in Jamaica, most definitely. Ah, right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Had a cool. great holiday there, and it's somewhere that I'd really, really like to go back to someday. Excellent. Right. I should have put up me. I should change me me back screen with the with the waves coming in and the palms. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Just for just for you, Neil. We're just gonna talk about this, everyone. But um, I want to. Um, we'll just take Neil back yeah wow. to, to, to to reminisce now I mean I'll just you know because I know I had the tri coaching logo but really I'm on I'm on the beach in Jamaica with you Neil okay. fantastic um what's the last book you read uh the last book I read I, I can't really remember to be quite honest I, been said, I can't read <laughs> uh okay I'll so not a great you. reader Huh? How do you, how do you, you know, do you, not a great reader, do you, or? No, I tend to, I, I'm not a great reader. I tend to suit, listen to podcasts and TED talks and things okay. like that more than I do. Audio books I'm big keen on. Okay, so, well, if you didn't read a book, what was the last audio book? Uh, the last read? one was uh, How to Change Your Life. It, it's okay. not very well known. But it's just around coaching and, and interacting with people. Okay, excellent. Um, right. What's the best movie or slash box set, because I can't tell the difference anymore, that you've seen this year? Okay, so during lockdown, I've, I've been watching a few films, and the two best ones I've seen is obviously Rocket Man, about okay. John. Yeah. And Yesterday, about the Beatles songs. Okay. Thought they were really, really good, to be quite honest. Really interesting. And I'm, I'm not a big film buff, but I sat through both of them and really okay. enjoyed them. Oh, well, then I, I, I tried Bohemian Rhapsody as well, then. Okay. Yeah, because I thought that was better than Rocket Man. So, um, yeah, give, give, that, give that a whiz. Because I quite like enjoyed Rocket Man, but I thought Bohemian Rhapsody was better than that. Haven't okay. seen the Beatles one. I might have a look up on that. What was that on Netflix or somewhere? Or? Uh, it's on Sky. It's on, it's on Sky. Sky. Okay. Sydney, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll have a look in that um, later. Um, hey, uh, well, I could. What would you do if you won the lottery? Oh, right. Okay. So I would. I'd certainly look after my friends and family. Uh, and, I'll and see you on the beach. Out. Yeah. And, and then I would travel the world. Got to do. 
OK, but which could be quite tough in the, you know, because every time you travel somewhere, you might have to spend two weeks in quarantine before they let you back out again. <laughs> this present time, but I don't think that would be too much of a bad thing, do you? <laughs> no, well, it depends where you're spending two weeks in quarantine, doesn't it? Five star hotel in Jamaica ain't going to kill you. So, <laughs> all right. Um, I suppose if you, I, don't, I think I've got, I even might have an insight into this, but uh, what is your favourite memory? Favourite memory. Oh. So I'm going to throw a bit of a curveball in here. Yeah. Uh, just recently, well, a year or so ago, we were Jolly Boys Day Out in London. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one of the things that I did was walk from Covent Garden to Borough Market. <laughs> oh, I remember this day. <laughs> yeah. 10,000 steps. Five bridges later through London, and my wife's ready to kill me. <laughs> that that was a really good day. That was yeah. that was a really good day. Yeah, you, yeah, I think you. I, I don't think you ever live it down, will you? No, I'm known by some tri coaching trainers for that. Not everybody, but yeah. some of them certainly know me for that. Yeah, no, that was a good day. I remember it well. Okay, um, I suppose if you're an animal. Yeah. Which one would you choose to be? Uh, most definitely a lion. Okay. Yeah. Female or male? Male or lion. Top okay. of the food chain. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. And I suppose my final question. If you could choose one superhero power, what would it be and why? Oh. I suppose most people would say being able to read somebody's mind, but I'd like to turn the clock back okay. when I was a lot younger and know what I know now because things yeah. have been different. Yeah, good call. Good call. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you don't want to explain that one to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> so I probably do, actually, because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. should have been a lot sooner than I was. So yeah, no, cool, cool. Okay, Neil, thank you. Um, anything you want to add? Uh, no, I, I would just say to people, you know, don't be afraid of CPD. Do as much CPD as you can. Certainly look a, up at the tri coaching tr training courses. Uh, and if if you need any advice, just get in touch with me or. You know, you can contact me in any way, email, phone. But, uh, yeah, th th thoroughly look at what, what there is out there for you and embrace it because it will make you better. Excellent. Neil, look, thank you for your time. Um, I'm going to end the meeting now. So, uh, I don't know. I'm in Martinique, so au revoir because that's a French Caribbean island. Okay. Oh, hi. Cheers, Graham. Cheers, mate. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.